as human beings, we are all the same. It doesn't matter the color of our skin or the language that we speak. We all come from the same place, from Africa. <laughs> I am Maori, storyteller from Colombia, and I want to tell you a story from Africa. It's the story of a couple, just like every couple in the world. They love each other, they like to spend some time together. They were young, they just got married, so they were living outside the tribe, building a new house and working on the field. She was building the house and he was working on the ground with the sound over him all day and she was building the house. She knew how many children were going to be, so she was building the house. One day, he came back, one afternoon, he came back to be working outside. And when he arrives home, he found his wife, uh, like, you know, well, you don't know, he didn't know. Well, she didn't know. You know that you know that you don't know. And we don't know, but you do, but you say that you know, but you really don't know. Okay. She was like, she wanted something, but she didn't know how to tell him. She was like, oh, <laughs> I want to go visit my parents. What? Yes, I miss them a lot. I want to go visit my parents. And he says, no. Why? Because of the rules of their tribe. When somebody gets married, they have to go away and they have to stay alone, a couple, until the first harvest. Otherwise, bad things will happen. So he was not going to let that happen. So he said, no. But she said, oh yes, please. But he said, no. And she said, oh, please, please, please. And he said, no, 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 no. So as she knew that that was not going to work, she tried something else. She wanted to change his mind. So what does she do? She unfolds her finger. It's just what, that what you need. Just a finger, just like this one. <laughs> here, here, right in the point where you can feel all the tickles. And she was doing that. Oh, please, 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 let's go. And he was there like, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, I <in> love. <laughs> yes. She did it. He changed his mind. Indeed, he changed his mind. So the next day, the first time in the morning, they woke up and they began the journey because they had to walk a lot. He was a lot. But by noon, they arrived to the middle of the journey. They had to cross a small river. Well, it was a small river because last night it was raining. So there were a lot, a lot of water, and the water became one with the soil, it was dark. They bah, break down the bridge, so they had to jump into the water. They were just about to do it, and they saw nearby them, they saw in the ground right there, a skull. It was right there, a skull. It was okay for them. They just thought, it's like, oh, okay, okay, maybe, maybe they're neighbors, they are cannibals, so they took up the gardens, it's okay. They were just about to jump, but the skull began to talk. Please, take me to the other side of the river. Uh, uh, <laughs> Would you please hold on a second? Honey, what did you say? You should take it. No, 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 I won't. Has no eyes, I don't trust it. You should take it. Has to go to the other side to meet with the rest of the skeleton, all the family. No, 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 I won't. Yes, you will. No, I won't. Hmm. You will. And she did it again. She unfolds the finger and put it right here. And that's why he said yes again. So he took the skull put it over his shoulder so they can jump into the water, I told you. It was a lot of water, they had to struggle a lot, and the water was dark. Ah, he came with an idea to get rid of that skull. He was going to take his hand right here, beneath the water, and suddenly just a slap, back, and the skull was going to fall. That was it. He did not wait too long. So, 
when he was taking the hen out of the water. The skull was faster than him. And, ah, 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 I, oh, I bet myself. <laughs> sorry, sorry. So they were uh, then struggling, and the skull told him that he was trying to take it down again, was going to bite him right here in the neck. And there was the lid. So they had to keep on going on with the skull crossing the river. So they crossed to the other side of the river, but the school was still there. We have to go right to our parents' house. No, you will go left. No, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. And when the school was just about to bite him again, they say, okay, okay, okay. We will go left, as you say. And they did. They were walking. It was a small road. I told you that it was noon, but it was dark. Yes, because in the top, all the branches of the trees were crossed and there was no light. They kept on working and they saw houses, haunted houses. They felt like spirits and they realized that they have arrived to the country of the death. And they knew it because they began to listen. Thousands of voices, they didn't know from where, but they listened, all those voices saying, Oh, school, it's great to see you here. And it's also great that you brought those pieces of meat with you. They were going to eat them. It was really scary. So they were going to eat them. You are right there, relax. But I'm really scared because you don't know. But they brought a big black pot at me when they were going to cook them. And they saw it say, oh no, why did we arrive at the hour of lunch? They were going, we, we are dinner. They know that that was, that was the place where they were going to. But the spirits told them they had to go to pick up the wood sticks where they're going to burn them. So they went back to the forest, into the woods, into the woods. They begin to look for the wood sticks so they can be cooked. <laughs> so they were breaking branches all around, like breaking a branch right here, and another one right here, and another one right there, and then, and, and. Mm. In one of those, they saw a big tree, an ebony tree, and when they were trying to cut a branch, they saw that something was jumping on. It was Anansi, the spider. Hey, what are you trying to do? Here are my nest and my children. Please, don't hurt them. Ah, those spirits. Ah, the school. Ah, I can help you with that. But you gotta make a promise. You too. You gotta make a promise. If I wanna help you with those spirits, you have to take care of my children. Take care well, okay? So, we have a deal. Okay. Shake hands. Mm. Shake hands. Shake hands. Shake. 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 Shake hands. It was a spider. <laughs> they had a deal. While Anansi was going to the ghost village, they were going to take care of his children. And they were there. <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> My love, I'm so hungry. No, 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 don't you even think about it. No, 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 just look. Have you ever tried fried spider? No, 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 remember our word. Okay, okay, just, just, just. No, spider chopstick. Look at this, all these legs. Mmm, so tasty. No, told you no. Okay, okay, just talking about spider beef. No. He was going to keep his word. So, Anansi 
was arriving to the ghost village. All the spirits were in the middle, around the pot. They were there, happy, dancing, singing this uh, African song, <laughs> this uh, African song, you know, the Hakuna uh, Matata. They were singing an African song right there. And they didn't realize, they didn't notice that Anansi, she was slightly, quietly, and smoothly going around, spreading her spider web smooth. Sharp, silk, and shining spider web. And they didn't notice. And in that moment, every tree, every roof, every branch, every root, every corner, every stone, every house, everything worked as a place to put the spider web. And that's what Anansi did spread all around and from the top of that mountain of spider web Anansi said spirits are like flies I can eat thousands in a day after all that they saw and they just say thanks and farewell to the spider. They came back through that narrow road until they found again the river. And then they went to the right, to their parents' home. When they arrived, they, everybody was so shocked. They were there, hey, what are you doing here? So they had to tell for the first time this story about the school and Anansi spider. And when they saw what they did, one of the oldest women in the tribe asked, what did you do with the school? Okay, we betrayed the school. It's okay, it's okay. Okay, we get it. And what did you do with the spider? We kept our word. That's it. Now you are good to go. So they went back to their house. And when they arrived, the house was not in the ground. And the harvest was one of the most famous harvests all around the world. And they also have their own harvest. They had children. And they made sure to tell this story to their children. And after that, they tell this story to their grandchildren. And after that, to their grand-grandchildren. And to their grand-grand-grand-grandchildren. And that's the way this story spread all around the world, from Africa, like humankind. One day, this story came to me. Now I am giving you this story to you. Who's going to go next? Mm. Who knows? Depends on you. Depends maybe on me. Depends on us. <laughs>